Ironically, Apple has failed to focus on one of the best features on iOS. And what I mean by that is Apple has failed to educate people on how powerful iOS focus mode can be. My name is J.I. I make videos on the technology in our lives and how we can use it to make our lives easier. In this video, I'm going to show you how powerful focus mode can be when it's used properly. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you have focus mode easily accessible in your control center. Now for myself specifically, I use focus mode for a variety of scenarios. This includes sleeping, driving, when I'm at work, when I'm on vacation, the list is endless. There are so many reasons you should be using this feature to your advantage. The main option here for focus mode is do not disturb. That's like a standard feature that you can get on almost any phone, regardless if you have Android or iOS. But what makes focus mode stand out from all of the rest is the ability to customize the specific focus that you want. Now all the modes that you see here can be set for a certain duration. So by default, one hour, until a certain time, or until you leave a certain location. This is with exception to sleep mode and driving mode. We'll talk about those in a second. But that ability to set when you want to trigger these specific modes can be modified right from control center. If you want to schedule your focus mode to be set at a specific time, you can do that easily. However, if you want AI to determine when that mode should be set based on your location and what apps you use, you can also enable smart activation for those scenarios. Say for example, you use Slack quite often when you're at work. When using the app, iOS will automatically determine you're working and switch you to the work focus mode so that you can concentrate on what's important. Every focus mode has the ability to set a specific schedule for when it's triggered, except for driving mode. And why is that? It's not a bug. There's a method to Apple's madness here, and I love the reason why. When I jump into my car with Apple CarPlay, my phone automatically sets me to driving mode without even having to manually enable it. It knows I'm in a vehicle and it switches to that mode automatically. Of course, if you don't have a car with CarPlay, you can still have that focus mode enabled automatically when your phone detects that you're in a moving vehicle. This might get annoying though if you're constantly a passenger in someone's car. It'll just automatically think that you're driving and put you into the driving focus mode. What I usually recommend for those who don't have CarPlay in their vehicle is to set that driving mode to automatically trigger when it's connected to your Bluetooth stereo. That way, no matter what vehicle that you have, CarPlay or not, it'll just automatically trigger when it's connected to your car's stereo system. I have mine automatically set me to driving mode when I'm connected to my newer vehicle's CarPlay system, and then for my older vehicle that doesn't have CarPlay, it will automatically start when it's connected to the Bluetooth stereo. Now, the best part about driving mode for focus is the ability to automatically send a text to someone who texts you while you're driving. You can set an automated message for anybody who texts you or for individuals to let them know that you're currently in the car and won't get to their message until later. That way, if it's an emergency, they'll know they'll have to call. Every focus mode has the ability to change your lock screen wallpaper on your phone and Apple Watch when that mode is enabled. This is incredibly useful so that you can customize how you want a specific focus to look. Depending on which mode you choose, you can also use Apple intelligence to decide which notifications are important and which ones aren't. If you don't want to leave that decision to the bots, well, you have the option to manually choose the people and the apps that you would want to bypass while in that specific focus mode. I also love the fact that you can set your own home screen based on which mode you choose. For example, if I use Slack, Mail, YouTube Studio, and any other productivity tools during work, I can have my home screen rearranged to show only those specific apps so that I don't get distracted. Focus filters is a great way to make apps behave a certain way when the specific focus is enabled. So for example, you can choose which mailboxes you want to show in your mail app, which messages you want to display from certain people, what calendars you want to show, or a specific profile that you would like Safari to enable. Third-party apps can take advantage of this feature as well, such as 1Password allowing me to choose the account or collection to enable. There are also system features like enabling always-on display, silent mode, low power mode, or dark mode 
based on the type of focus that I choose. Taking advantage of those focus filters is a great way to reduce unnecessary distractions when it matters the most. Okay, focus mode is awesome, but what happens if you want to allow certain people or apps to contact you regardless of what mode you select? Well, luckily, Apple has thought about that. You can bypass any mode you choose by allowing certain people or apps in your list and notifications to appear. In this example for sleep mode, I want my wife to still be able to call or text when I'm asleep in case it's an emergency, or I want my Apple Home app to still send me notifications in case security to my home is breached. These are important things to consider when customizing your specific focus mode. Additional options for notifications include the ability to show these on the lock screen, hide or unhide notification badges for certain apps, or even silence notifications and incoming calls. You can also dim your lock screen, something I find particularly advantageous when I'm in sleep mode. Focus mode can be an incredible tool to keep yourself mindful about how you use your time. It can be an easy way to eliminate distractions that aren't important while still filtering the ones that truly are. I do love the fact that focus mode works across the entire Apple ecosystem and all of my devices talk together when I'm choosing focus mode on one specific device. So if I enable focus mode on my iPhone, it'll automatically enable it on my MacBook, my iPad, and even my Apple Watch. Now this is incredibly helpful on my Apple Watch because I use my watch to track my sleep every night and I don't want notifications coming through when I have it in sleep mode. That would be a massive distraction. You can enable this option right from the focus mode settings so that it shares across all of your Apple devices. I also love the fact that iMessage informs your contacts right within the messaging app that a focus mode is enabled. That way when someone tries to message you, they'll see that you have that specific focus mode enabled and won't expect a reply immediately. Apple has made this feature so useful in everyday life and I feel like it's very underrated and doesn't get the kind of attention that it should. I highly recommend using this tool to your advantage to increase your productivity and just your mental well-being as a whole. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful to you, let me know in the comments down below and go ahead and subscribe if you want more videos like this. My name is J.I., thank you for watching and thank you for kicking it with me.